I'd something. like to ask about the flute. The flute. Do you have the flute in your inventory? No, I do not. Need Where is the flute? Who's holding on? I believe you claim the flute. I did, but I'm not sure how to turn it over, put it into my inventory. So, is it still in the bag of holding them? Yeah, or it, it's. I mean, in, in the, the treasure vault. In the treasure vault. It is. All right, flute. I see it. Okay, I am going to move it into Lavinia's. The way you do that is you just drag it over into your inventory, don't you? Isn't that how you do it? Yep. So if I take it and I drag it over to you, boop, you now have a flute, and I will identify it for you. An ancient artifact of Tethys, the cool goddess of the sea. This flute is made from a triton bone and allows one to channel the goddess power to cast terrifying spells. Ooh. Using it, however, has steep consequences. All right. As the flute tries to influence the user to do Tethys's bidding, slowly corrupting them, only those that accept the will of the goddess and turn to the sea, rejecting everything that is connected okay. To the of the world of the surface dwellers can use the full power of the flute. No, I'm listening. So no, I do not want that flute. I so that flute can cast dispel magic, mariner's curse, ice storm. Those are mariner's curse and ice storm. By the way, are fifth level spells. The seventh level spell, cone of cold and power word blind and the ninth level spell power word kill we want the flute i was gonna say dude if you don't but, take the flute i'll take it but like, but you'd have to swear to the sea god become the the vassal of the sea god you essentially would eventually a follower. become cursed and you would abandon land for the ocean right. eventually. eventually but it could be a, like a Flute of last resort if we're really hosed. But but I mean if if we give it to Wait, why don't we give it to Thaddeus? He's already sworn to the ocean. Well he's, he's married I'm not to the sworn ocean. To, I'm, I'm you're, married you're to married to <laughs> I mean I, I can go there. I would rather be able to go back and forth, thank you very much. Mm. Okay. It means you're bad. <laughs> yeah. No, I I recognize I, I, I recognize recommend. that this flute is very badass. Yeah. But we already got the warning mm. that some of these items um, are not necessarily the safest things to use. Mm. My spidey sense says, do not touch it. Yeah. And Fair enough. Oh, look, a 10 foot pole. Well, <laughs> but we could sell it or trade That's it. That's what I'm saying. Sell it. Okay. Trade it. All right. Well, from that perspective. To some patsy who doesn't know what it's worth. Like just throw it in the bag of holding and then. <clears throat> Well, if you don't touch Kinda. it or you don't use it, you won't attune to it. Who's not going to, like, okay, are we putting, he's got gloves. Yes. He's got the special gloves. It's, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's, of course, it's like the ring from Lord of the Rings. It greens a hold on you the more you use it. Mm -hmm. So putting it in the bag of holding, will it impact anything else in the bag of holding? No. Okay. No, you're over. I know I'm just far too careful but sometimes but you that it. was the most powerful item in the whole vault and it's interesting that you honed right in on that flute it was the most powerful and also the one that comes with the biggest trade-off right fairly good price i almost said hello to the flute just because i was bored of it being so non-musical around here and i was like doo, 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 let's do this beep, 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 beep. in our last campaign uh rob was playing a character named uh scar right scar scar a barbarian scar and he got from a god in disguise he was given I believe it was a legendary spear, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. An un or no, it was a pipe. It was a little pipe that you pipe. found in yep, the yep, dungeons, yep. right? Yep. Just this little innocuous pipe, and and the god approached him again. They met the god, and the god approached him and made him a trade for a really good spear. But this pipe 
if it had ever been magically identified, was one of the most powerful artifacts in the whole Ooh. world. And he packed it around. No idea. No idea. Didn't know what it was. If we ever play again, which I'm sure we will play again, but on the next campaign, I think I want to be a bard. A bard. Scan the hand. Whoever gets that <laughs> reference, thumbs well, up. You never know. I mean, you don't even know if Josephine's going to survive this campaign. So the way wow. it works in Dungeons and Dragons what is... What a rude death wish there. <laughs> The way it works in Dungeons and well, and and Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons is if you end up in a situation where all of the things align the wrong way, you can end up with one or more people in your party killed permanently, and then it's a reroll. Yeah. I know, but I have a green rope now, so I'm pretty sure I will survive. <laughs> So back to the flute for just a moment. Yes, is there a way? of not being influenced by it well just don't use it but it's a gradual thing it's not like you're going to turn into a sea hag first use yeah. it, it corrupts you over time the more you use it now percy it's your turn i want to do the bracers the bracers yes please right are they in your they are uh, currently in my equipment your equipment okay good that way i can click the button to uh identify them which i have just done and it says they are clawed bracers animal claws are woven into the thick leather of these bracers the bracers fuse temporarily with your forearms with the claws extending to your fingertips you gain a climb speed of 20 feet and a claw unarmed attack with the agile and finesse traits it'd be a one d6 damage were these the, the the leather lobster bracers well they were le leather and they had claws you were thinking lobster claws but no no they no were the, the, but there was something about leather lobster bracers leather bracers but it was it was not a lobster oh. claw it was oh, a okay. kitty cat claw oh okay i should have made that clear Meow. you know what i totally would have made some lobster bracers if i thought of that but too late now that's what you got and what about you mr thaddeus um what about this unusual trident okay the unusual trident is it in your yes inventory let me find the unusual trident. it is under consumables yes this means that uh well, that's equipment, sorry. Consume this. This means that, um, obviously, it's not going to last forever. It is a trident of lightning. Ooh. This item looks like a normal trident carved with Gozren motifs, whatever the hell those are. Gozerian. And if thrown without being Gozer activated, it wobbles in the air and fails to strike true. When you activate the trident, the carvings crackle with electricity. You then hurl the trident. It shatters immediately after leaving your hand and unleashes its magic as a fourth rank lightning bolt originating from your space. The bolt deals 5d12 electricity damage and has a DC 25 basic reflex save. Wow. That's good. Can it only How does one Go ahead. I'm sorry, how does one activate the trident? Uh I believe to activate the trident you just concentrate and uh push the button that says click here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. You roll a D twenty. All right. <laughs> Can it only be used once, or is it a multi-use? Yeah, as soon as it leaves their hand, if you've activated, if you don't activate it, you throw it, it's going to go blah, 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 bonk, yeah. and just lay there. But if it's activated, as soon as it leaves your hand, it shatters into the five light. electrical bolts that absolutely give whatever it hits a bad day. Okay, so it's it's like the, the biggest bomb you could ever throw, but you've got it in your hands now. Sorry, you can target five five creatures with it no you can only target one thing but it hits it with 5d12 
I so see. Roll five five D twelve. Right? Do you that know? That's like good. A really rad that's a hell of a lot of damage. So is it a? Do you have to roll a certain number in order to be able to hit them? Or yes. Yes. They can dodge out of the way if they beat a DC 25 reflex save, hmm. which is a high reflex save to beat. Very difficult. Yeah. Should have used it on the crab. Should have. Could have. <laughs> Would have. Right? But so, why? The but, crab was like kind of boring. I, I was actually. hungry. It could have used a butter candle and get fried it up. And... <laughs> That crab had something like 360 hits. I would have preferred to have the green rope around the crab's neck and be adventuring off into the wherever. Pull a Princess Leia on it. Yeah. I was just thinking that's what she meant. Yeah, that's what I thought she meant too. Yeah. No, 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 no. More like, whoa, buddy, let's go. Uh, <laughs> One of the things that uh, you have gathered, one of the things that you've noticed about the merfolk is that the merfolk tend to make their habitations in water that isn't too deep because the way the oceans work is the opposite of the way we are used to things working on land. In land, your, your lower lands closer to the sea tend to be the lands that are more tropical. The lands have got more temperate temperatures the higher you get in elevation uh the colder and the harsher it gets the opposite happens in the sea the closer you are to the surface it tends to be the warmer more temperate and also the more lush places with living corals and more tropical fish the deeper you go the colder and harder it gets it gets dark it gets very cold and there be monsters the big big monsters how is that the, the opposite ocean. Well, because or it, in one I, you have I, to I go think down. It'd be about in the, the oceans, you have to go down, mm -hmm. but on land you. Oh, okay, but like mirror off. image sort of thing. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's what I mean. One of the other things you learn from merfolk is that the monsters that live in the deep, the monsters that live in these oceans, are unchallenged, and it is so dangerous to cross the ocean. You cannot cross from one continent to another in a surface vessel. Only flying vessels can traverse this this world. Anybody that tries to do anything other than hug close to shore with uh, ocean-going or sea-going vessels is pretty much guaranteed that they're going to be found and eaten by a leviathan or a kraken that could be of gargantuan proportions, right? The one that you saw is not the biggest thing that uh crab we wreck saw, a saw kraken you saw was a crab wreck yeah crab wreck oh Which a crab a wreck ancient crab mm -hmm. yeah it's a you also saw a shape of a of a you didn't see a crack mm -hmm. we saw we saw a dark sh shape i was just trying to get you that to say was, it <laughs> that was a leviathan in the distance right mm -hmm. so like i say the deeper you go the more dangerous it gets which is why no ship can ever cross any of the uh, oceans of this world. The only flying ships make it from continent to so What kind of a relationship do the merfolk have with the monsters? Will, do, will the monsters eat the merfolk as well? Or? Yep, the monsters eat everything. So the merfolk have got to either battle them or run. And the way the merfolk move from place to place if they've got to go a long distance is that they move with their largest domesticated fish, sharks, orcas, and whales, and they move as a group so that they can defend themselves, almost like an underwater caravan, so that they can defend themselves. And they use the weapons that they have, things like lightning tridents, <coughs> to fight these gargantuan beasts if they if they can't One outrun use them. only lightning trident. Yeah. Wait, oh, I, mean, I used my, my, my turn already when what are the regular is that tridents one used do? for battle or just one use period are the regular tridents just work like spears okay because yeah. she just, said just one use and things. i'm like oh, it's weird no yeah. lightning lightning trident, trident is one shatters one use. on it's one use if you activate the spell oh, if you activate the spell okay hmm. so you got to really want it now it could be that you will find other weapons but in it, the world like, that have a reusable lightning spell but this ain't one of them out mm. of the water 
per se. Any, so, is there anything else that anybody wants from here? Because we should probably. Oh right. Start preparing. Did we figure out the leather flagon was clay, clay caden like? It's just leather? a really, really nice uh, leather cup. Okay. Yeah, I asked about that. It, it like it's pretty boring. And the golden garnet ring. It was in a chest along with a vessel with the pestle, and uh, the flagon with flag the dragon. Dragon, the dragon. The yeah, yeah. Through. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just scrolling down and I see like I it's zero now, but it's still in my inventory as a placekeeper for some reason. The wondrous figurine onyx dog. Yes, you gave the doggy I to gave the girl. It to the girls. So I suggest we take the unusual chain shirt and all the equipment that yep. is um, unusual. I, I was going to suggest that. Uh, ju- uh, Josephine try on the unusual chain search because it sounds light and easy for her to, to manage in. It didn't sound light to me. It sounded like it would be very heavy. Well, it yeah. says bulk three, but I, I don't know. You said it was light. The unusual chain shirt is yeah. a bulk two. A bulk two. Sh- a a okay. chain is medium armor. Is it? Mm-hmm. No. Is it medium or light? No, it's medium. Unusual it chain? Medium, but it's okay. an unusual chain, so it needs to be identified. Did okay. What was unusual headwear again? It's flexible. It moves to any shape. So I'm thinking of disguising him. I want the mini purpose hat. I'll let you take it. Do go ahead and take it. I'm taking that one. I may need to borrow it at some point. (laughs) If if it disguises. If it disguises. But I could probably make use of that next time we're in some sort of civilization, someplace like Rendezvous again. Yes, it, it sounds like a hat of disguise. I, I recommend taking the unusual change shirt as well. That, or, the, well, that's what I was trying to move, actually. Um, the leather belt could be like a, a belt of giant strength or something. Like that would be a ranger. Well, I was thinking is, is it about an the unusual fact that leather belt? My or dress just, needs just a, leather belt. a belt, oh, well, right? Sure. Are you wanting the unusual shoes as well, Miss Smith? What were the unusual shoes again? There were a couple of boots that looked like pirate boots. Right. I wanted those. <laughs> yes. I want the unusual shoes and the unusual hat. Now, I will I will say that you're able to identify one item per day. Raven can work to identify one item per day on his own. Okay. All right. As he gets more proficient at it over the levels he'll get better and faster and be able to do more than one per day but right now he's limited to one per day for the ones you don't have an implied new one ladies did, and gentlemen i don't think we, day. i just wanted to finish asking whether the leather belt did we determine that it was magical yep okay that that is what i want to be able do to you want find. it yeah because i need a i need a belt for my dress right it's so uh, <laughs> it makes sense that depending on what Oh, did I actually accidentally just take that? I thought no. I... No, the leather no. belt is still there. The leather belt's okay. still there. But what? you didn't take that. Oh, leather belt. You, you, didn't take, you, that, you haven't well, taken I, the unusual have, chain shirt yet. You I haven't have, taken that. Um, you want that? Unusual... Yeah. Go ahead. You can, a, unusual chain is what I took. Well, yeah. yeah. You should take that anyway, but take the unusual yeah, chain shirt as well. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to appear greedy. Um, and We are hella greedy, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with greed. Yeah. Okay. Later on, I will try and transfer the okay, belt. I'm going to transfer the belt to the uh, bag of holding for you for now. Thank Here, you. I can drag it over. Nope, I just did it. I, okay. And it's unusual dueling sword. There's nothing fancy about it, you say? Other than it's unusual. You know, I'm going to move the bag of holding into the treasure folder as well. Did okay. we not take five tridents into our bag of holding? My I, goodness. I thought we had. I'll do it right now. But those are just regular spears. So? But it's five we, tridents. I mean, there's five of us. There's five tridents. Well, I don't think I can use it, but sure. You're obviously wanting to be unprepared for they're, underwater adventures. They're 25 bulk if we take all five. Okay, Lavinia, you've got the leather belt now in okay. your equipment. Okay, someone else decides. My vote is for the five tridents, but... Well, you are certainly welcome to take one of the five. Well, I, like, I don't want just one trident. It's way cooler if we all have one. Well, I can't use it, so it doesn't help me any. 
Yeah. You can't use a freaking trident? No, no, he can't use it as a as a wizard. He can't use a melee we weapon? Not that no. one. I can use a staff. He can use the staff, he can yeah. use wands, he can use very light things like little light crossbows. But anything bigger than that, uh, as far as uh, martial weapons go, as they're called, martial weapons, a wizard doesn't have the strength or proficiency to do it. He's no. got the trade-off between either he can have the magical power mm -hmm. or he can have the physical martial power. Okay. You are in the middle as a ranger where you, you know, for example, okay, if, if like a giant friggin ball and chain on a stick came up you would not have the strength to use that right all right percy might if he worked with it a long time but you wouldn't have the strength so that's a weapon that i would deem unusable by your class same right. with everybody at the table except maybe percy mm -hmm. which is why the only one who maybe can eventually tune to that plate armor is percy because he's the only one big enough and strong enough. makes sense mm -hmm. and if he had not been cursed uh, as a weird tiger, he would not be able to either because it's the weird tiger strength that is going to affect him as far as his human physical appearance, making him more and more muscled over the coming months. Cool. I'm going to get cut, baby. The weird tiger is buff. Yes. <laughs> Pump up the jam. Pump, pump it up, pump it up. So can we? Let's take these coins as well because they're worth a lot. Hey, okay, so we're not we're passing on the tridents, much to my dismay. Well, do you want one of them? No, no you can take I one. don't want one of them. They're just heavy. I, like, what am I going to do? I, I, run I around with a trident strapped to my swords, back? Swords, bows. <laughs> I hear that everything. the tridents make excellent ten poles, but they're kind of hard on the fabric. Yeah. You can stick them in the ground the other way, though, and then yeah, put his head on the top. Yeah, yeah, right. Did you want the throwing knife? There's a dagger and a throwing knife. Both are non-magical. Just good, regular, old weapons. Well, I've already got two throwing knives. Now I've got two more. Okay. So, I got from there, okay, so. well, so you, you could have yeah. five altogether. Throw the that bag would of holding be... salt later. I can throw three at a time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well. Oh, we can throw three at a but, time. But if we threw them into the bag of holding, if oh, you... put it in the bag of holding. Bag of holding. And if it's something like that. He does something. have those magical gloves that anything he throws comes right back to him. So. Yes. Okay, yes. each one of those gloves can hold five weapons. Ooh. Right? Ooh. One, two, three, four, five. There are little stitched sigils. All right. Weapon. Okay. Grab the so other you knife. Can carry oh. ten weapons in your in your gloves. Oh, neat. Okay. They cannot be any larger than a knife or a dagger, but that's okay. what they're built. All right. That's what the dagger gloves are all. Okay, about. I'll take it. Real life Edward Scissorhands. Pew, pew. The idea is that, of course, he's eventually going to want an arsenal that has different types of daggers. Some daggers may have a magical property and others don't. The trade-off will be which tend to carry out of the potential dozens and dozens of daggers that he comes across uh, through his adventures. And also, you sell the ones you don't want. One of the things right. that comes with being a follower of Phrasma is this necklace that you can get that has different knives on it. And... Um, you, you can just pluck it off. Who's of Phrasma? Phrasma is, is the goddess that I'm affiliated with. And she basically um, helps people pass over. And like not, like, she doesn't like undead. She's totally against undead. That's She's her like big guardian point. of the Rainbow Bridge? Kind of. Phrasma kind of. has loaned... Lavinia to R1 for this mission. Oh, okay. So that's why I'm kind of tuning into some of those mm -hmm. different types of things, but I read about that the other day. So I thought that was interesting because what's cool is that when you pluck the little knife off, it can turn into different things, right? So, anyways. She hasn't found one of those yet, but Do you there's have one somewhere in the world. Not yet. She's we need to get it. you one. Yep. Yes. She needs to find one somewhere. Yep. Anyway. Well, ladies and gentlemen, have we 
Are we satisfied with the plunder? Yes. Can we? Can you finally I kiss your wife goodbye? <laughs> like I know she's. I've been, been waiting to do that. <laughs> um, I'm going to have a private word with with my wife for a few minutes. Gross. About five. <laughs> Kina obviously is not looking forward to the sudden departure of Thaddeus. And he's getting, starting to get pretty weepy about this. Mm. Feeling <coughs> upset and Poor makes Kina. him swear that he will be back as he has promised. Oh, I would have done that anyways without her forcing me to swear it. I have a question. How can you tell if a mermaid's crying in the ocean? <laughs> the tears the tears are a different color as oh, they come out to me. Go into the water. Away. An iridescent that was silver. Really funny though, Glenn. <laughs> it seemed like a good question. It was a good question. Yes. <sighs> they, they start blubbering. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> are you saying your goodbyes? Are you ready? You're ready to depart. I'm saying my goodbyes. I'm Bye, Kina. <laughs> hey. and, and I just Bye, wanted Kina. to have a few words about, about being ready for. Um, any oncoming attacks from from the army of the undead, the, the shambling dead, or whatever they're called, the they, soldiering they, dead. Yeah, well, I have a different view on that. Well, they were soldiers. That's where they came from. Yeah, well, my uncle used to be a commander as well. He used <laughs> to ha- be a poindexter. He's not now. But just no, saying, be ready for them. You know, open communications with neighboring kingdoms. Coordinate if for communication if there's an attack be ready one of the things that that they have found so far is that the distance is one of the things that's protected them as merfolk the problem is that the undead don't have any problem at all uh, being underwater being underwater and and walking through shallows of the ocean but the distance it's a tremendous distance that they traverse with their will. If you guys, I'm trying to like night. remember, like re- imagine walking through water. It's pretty awful. So to be a zombie walking through water is like, yeah, they're, they're really <laughs> slow. <laughs> well, if if you remember Pirates of the Caribbean, they were just kind of sloshing through the water very slowly. Like boom, boom. that was one of the most brilliant things about that first movie though yeah yeah was when they attacked the ship by walking by walking across the, the lagoon right oh so and i gorgeous. i consider that still to be one of the best movies pirates of the caribbean that disney has ever made you know yeah, yeah, yeah. when uh when the captain of the ship uh says to um the girl she's played by kira knightley he said what does he say you best be believing in what is, in monsters no what does he say oh you best be believing in ghost stories missy because you're in one the and eight. then she looks and all of them are dead on yeah, the all of them are dead i haven't seen that movie in years i think i, I want to watch it I, again. i've got them all on video and i've got disney so yeah like yeah um, i'll just like i'll just keep i it also on mentioned tonight, to my but... wife that that if i am able to find any way of communicating in the interim i will do so um, you know, keep an Apparently eye on. You had some way to scry and see what she's doing. She had a way to scry to see what you were doing. Maybe you should have the scry wand. Well, why don't you just just save work it for now? Or you could do it for him. I don't yeah. need it. Um, I, I would also talk, like to talk to her father as well, and saying keep an eye on on the tower. Right. Um, people, mm, the pinnacle. The pinnacle. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep an eye on that. Um, set watch, set traps for the, for the undead, do whatever you have to, and stay safe. Right. Okay, All right. so are you departing the, oh, hey, Kato. <laughs> I saw that happening. Right. If you go to, uh, the adventure screen, I'm going to see if this is working again, and yes, it is. So, I have discovered, discovered what the problem is. The problem is trying to do it on this tablet with a wireless connection it won't update and but it does fine on this laptop so there we Ah. go so once again you mount Ferris, the uh, whale uh the uh, merfolk come along and uh, help you each get attached to a lead on the whale uh it is the same captain again who kind of avoids making eye contact with josephine this time 
very conscious of the fact that he may be murdered by his his uh, old you... mermaid. <laughs> if uh, what are you doing? What are you doing, Captain? What are you doing? I want Don't to touch his tummy, he'll bite you. I want to control the keyboard. Go down. Go down. Here. You go this way. Really? Larry likes to jump up on the TV in the middle of our thing. I'm trying to get him so that he doesn't do it because he gets handled too much by me if he does it. And then I'm stopping him. So you, uh, basically, you uh, are all attached to Reigns on Ferris, and you have... Uh, a return trip much the same way you came it's not like you can recognize anything on the ocean floor uh, to tell you uh, uh, but it's an uneventful trip you return <coughs> to the same cove and uh, Fira swims right into the cove right over top of the old uh, shipwreck the shipwreck is still there the original one that mm-hmm. Thaddeus had investigated and there are actually mermen guards stationed around in the water <clears throat> you notice a few of them around the pinnacle clearly they are concerned about uh, what you just said and they're keeping an eye out not just for um, whatever might come to from the pinnacle but also for uh any airships that come over that may have been infested so uh you depart ferris no nope. oh f- depart ferris I, w- I want to go to the shore of the lagoon okay and and uh arrange the rocks in a message that can be seen from the pinnacle okay okay right. so the message that you arrange the rocks let me guess the message says Chronos cum clava ferus. Does it say that? Yeah. Ferreus. Ferreus. That's iron. That's a really good guess. Either, master. Or clava ferius ite domum. Ite domum. Yeah, go what, home. <laughs> and, what, and Thaddeus, what, what does that mean in Latin? Um, clava ferius ite domum means, uh, quite simply, um, iron club, go home. Um... <laughs> The other one, what was it? Um, I thought it was down with the iron. Yeah, pronus uh, cum clava ferius means down with the iron club. Uh, uh, but I left that. Prone. I already left that message down at the bottom of the seabed. Right. So I'm leaving a different one up here. So if, if I can get it together, I'll actually do a couple of graphics that have it on there in the <laughs> stones. So you're actually no like leaving, like. Um, oh, I'm absolutely eight, taunting. Nineteenth century graffiti. Hmm. I am Basically. absolutely taunting the, yeah. the Iron Club. I, absolutely. I have a completely side question, which has been burning in my brain for the last possibly in two months. What's up? What physics does the uh, aerolite cluster levitate by if it's exposed to light if it's exposed to some form of magic or electricity does it levitate and otherwise it stays on the ground and how if you mind the thing out and you're in a darkened cave do you have to keep it compressed yeah when you have to keep it down on the ground in order to keep it running away and if that's the case we just acquired a bunch of air like clusters from the you know and how do we keep them from floating away at that time did we put them in dark bags so that they're not exposed to light or magic? Or did we shield them from magic somehow? Or Very good question. What, what activates them to become buoyant? What deactivates them from being buoyant? They are always naturally buoyant. Okay. And yes, if you were to open the bag of holding hmm. and just not hold on to them securely, they would just eventually float up bloop, and they would go. Okay. Aerolite is basically condensed, solidified aether. Hmm. Aether being the magical substance that permeates this entire world that is missing from the world of Earth. Okay. The world of Earth is very much a world where we have what we would call primordial power or primordial energy. Um, from uh, 
all of the things that we make from iron and all of the all of the fire that we create you often using fossil fuels to do it even back then coal and stuff like that um but in this world the biggest mark difference of the thing that gives this world its golden hue and this thing that gives it its magical power is the presence of this substance that permeates everything in the world called aether and if you get high enough in the atmosphere you see a point at which it begins to diminish greatly and you cannot fly easily above that point because there isn't enough aether left in the atmosphere so it's retained it or generated levitate, by the earth which is why there is kind of a surface 100 150 feet above in the air where most things tend to float because that they reach equilibrium be, exactly they achieve mm. equilibrium at that point things can go higher but they have to work really hard at doing it now aether clusters air like clusters that are that are made of aether are mined from deep in the earth where they have formed under pressure over eons the pressure on this aether mm. Um, and they are mined by the core dwarfs. There are five realms in this world that are that are that are that all are interlocked together, and that's why you see the five rings. Yeah. You've got the realm of air, right? Or Anu, as it's called by the <coughs> guides. You've got the realm of uh A's shadow or A's the afterworld, which is that our one is Lord of. You've got the realm of core or the deep earth where the core dwarves live you've got the realm of the fey all of the realms have three letter names anu core ace fey and the last one is mer which can is why they're called the merfolk can these be added into the notes for future uh, reference? yes i will try and get it i got most of the stuff written up and i will try and I mean, get this added in me i i just wanted to stick a couple of air like clusters into the sunken ship and make it float up in the air but i, I don't know That's how that's not would work. gonna work oh, you yeah. have had in your possession and not even realized it the other substance hmm. that interacts with air light and that is called anchorite okay anchorite is a substance that when it is placed in proximity to air light, the closer it is, the more it nullifies the levitation field and levitation, levitating properties. It is a dull gray rock. Mm -hmm. When you found the abandoned wagon caravan in the desert and you made the big hot air balloon out of the fabric that was there, that was a caravan of the core dwarves the reason that it had such a big overhang and the reason that it had all that fabric is that the core dwarves are terrified of the Did surface they are like incredibly the uncomfortable okay. being on the surface of the world they feel like, they, like they'll just fly off anything. out into the atmosphere so the only way that they can make it anywhere <laughs> to sell their wares is if they make these big caravans so that they are under these big overhanging ceilings or under big heavy cloth awnings so that they still feel that they are inside something and not crawling around like flies on the surface of something. Massive agoraphobia. When you found that abandoned caravan, you found a case that had six large aerolite gems in it. Mm -hmm. And you opened up that case and the air light gems just sat there just perfectly. And you never took another look at that case. You didn't examine it. You didn't try and check anything and you did not find that there was a hidden drawer underneath the bottom of that case that if you pulled out had six equally sized anchorite uh, stones. And that was what was keeping those big air light gems in place. Holy cremoli. Yep. Wow. There have been lots of things like that where you didn't look, so I didn't tell you. Mm. Hmm. 
Where do so, you now where you, do you find see, but TA I'm not the I'm not the mechanical wizardy type. So I'm, the physics of the these ships theory. is that most of these ships also carry mm. a certain amount of anchorite. Right. And the way that they control their ascent and their descent is how close they position that anchorite. It's on a it's in a enclosure that slides mm. to the air light. If they get it too close, the whole ship would drop. Right. So but, it's like a positive and negative on a magnet, basically. Mm. Okay. And if that that's ship really takes, cool. If that ship takes a blow in battle, that screws up that mechanism. For example, either the arrow light comes loose and begins to float away, or the anchorite gets hit and drops out of the ship. Then that ship is going to capsize, and eventually fall out of the sky one way or the other. Because mm. those ships are perfectly balanced with the arrow light -like clusters in them to keep them level and to have them float. But to keep them from going off out of control, they've got anchorite, to, a certain amount of anchorite to balance how much arrow light -like there is. Okay. There Ship you go. Ship captains must Actual be mighty made up bullshit physics from Dave. Luckily, I was prepared he, he for that one because the, I actually yeah. had written out a lot of that shit like three, three years ago. Sci fi so gobbledygook that we needed. Yep. Okay. That was so now you know about Anchorite, uh, uh, which I don't think you've ever asked about before. No. So I have done everything I need to do. So I too. I want to come back and ask about the idea of building a ship that we can use what materials we have available to start to float around. Uh, as uh, I don't know if we can bring up the the shipwreck because it's probably pretty beat up from being under. Yeah, oh, it's, it's got, got a, a huge crab. crab on it right now. Oh, and like octopus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But the concept though of building a flying machine though mm. sounds within our realm if we choose to do that. If we were clever enough, yes. Well, we also can go to these other portals and do like a speed run. I was gonna say like if we can get us to the pinnacle i've gotten now this fancy rope that i can throw up there and yep. we can yes or you can even just instruct it to go up uh, and well wrap yes but something. it takes 10 turns like 10 feet per turn six seconds each yeah so i gotta send the rope up there and have it secure itself somehow but mm -hmm. then we can all climb up it and right. then we yep. would be in at the pinnacle right cool. there, yeah. it'd take a minute to go 100 feet yeah. So one word on the flying ships. If you're to make any ship out of pine or out of oak or out of any of the usual mahogany, any of the usual woods that you are familiar with, uh, pretty much no amount of aerolite is going to have enough loft to lift you and make that ship mm. fly. You need the only wood in the world that seems to work well, and that is a wood called light beam. Light beam. Well, that's the one that we lit on fire the one time because <laughs> we thought we'd have a nice cozy fire in the middle of this fallen, you know, sky ship. You're right. And it sparked and, and you lost Extremely your gun making abilities. flammable light beam. And he's right. That's exactly yeah. why that ship started on fire. Yep. And the only place that you can find light beam is uh, most, most of the races have to trade with the Fae for light beam. Because because mm. light beam grows in the deepest uh, groves of uh, the different fey wild. Seems like all the good the stuff world. comes from the fey forest. I'm just saying. Well, so. you've got to you've got to trade with the core dwarves for the clusters, uh, unless you can get them some other way. Mm -hmm. For example, the Aesir Vikings, they the core dwarves will not trade with them, which is one of the reasons why they try and raid whatever they can to get them. Another point is. The, in this world, something that you hear if you discuss, if you talk, it's common knowledge amongst all the people of this world, is that the floating flying cities do not work with anything to do with air light. It's a completely different mechanism. They are floating and flying because of an unknown ancient technology. Huh. The floating flying cities are very very ancient beyond the memory of anyone and they work on a technology that nobody knows even the people who live in them don't know how they stay up and there are a few technologies that the giants that live in them use 
lightning electrical based technologies, lightning cannons, to defend themselves from Viking raiders. So there. There's a whole bunch of stuff about the world of era. Yay. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's go. go. Pinnacles. Okay, so, let's go. so we're on a whale. No, we're off the whale. We've left the whale. We've left the whale. Or we're on, on shore. shore. We're on the yep. shore. On you shore. Okay. are back. Let's send the rope up. Do, 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 do. All right. So we are back in Lumina Cove. And I'm going to activate that. I'm so excited about my magical green rope. There you go. Yay. We're back in Lumina Cove. Yay. So and uh, you're able to use the rope and you find that the rope will go up uh, 100 it's feet. obviously it's obviously at least 200 feet to the top you're not going to be able to make it all with one length of your green rope but you could dang it take it up halfway we're, we're gonna go 100 time. feet at a time i guess okay so can this rope only go 100 feet yeah that's all it is it's only 100 foot long well could we tie another rope to it and let it continue on can we daisy chain ropes onto it? That's a good idea. I think it needs to be stable on a stable base to go. Well, that, up like uh, from, at, the, at oh, the end yeah. of the green rope, yeah. Tie another rope. Yeah. So it can climb up the side of this cliff as long as the cliff is physically there to to attach to. The hmm. question would be, what is the 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 distance that this rope can can travel on its own? Hundred feet. Like, do you have to keep touching it in order yes. for it to? As it says clearly in the instructions, if you look at the description of the rope. Yeah, rope of climbing, in brackets, lesser. Okay, but if you open There up, are lots of plateaus. Sorry. This we could silk rope measures 100 feet long regroup. and is capable of holding up to 3,000 pounds. If the rope is ever cut, only the longest remaining portion retains its magic. Uh, frequency is one once per day. Effect: You hold one end of the rope and point to a destination. The rope animates for one minute, moving ten feet per round until it reaches the destination or runs out of length. The rope can move across any damp, sorry, non-damaging horizontal or vertical surface, but it can't extend <coughs> upward without a surface to support it. At any point while the rope is animated, you can use an interact action to wiggle the rope, give it one of the following commands. Stop in place, fasten securely to the nearest available object, detach from an object, or not, or unknot itself. So how tall is the is the 200. cliff base? 200 feet? Yeah, estimated it's about 200 okay. feet up to the top. Back the so I suggest you tie the rope to you, and then we hand you our lengths of rope for the rest of the 100 feet, and you scoot up with that rope that'll carry 3,000 pounds at 10 feet per per round. So 10 times I am a good six, scurrier. 600 feet. So you should be able to go all the way Two, up with one. Sorry? 200. 10 feet times six. So there's sixty. So there's. So you're saying, so let me like ten rounds per. Let me scoot up there, carry the rope, and then go. And, wait, am I climbing this whole way? That sounds not so fun. We have a rope. Magic. You send the rope ahead, and then you basically I send pull yourself the rope up. ahead. Okay. Yeah. And then do, 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 and then climb the rope, and then and then I do it again. Yeah. Do, 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 and then you climb the rope. Okay. Yep. Two minutes later, ta-da! And then you let and, down the regular and rope. And I put all the what are they called? Pistons in. Yeah. Pitons. 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 You're only yeah. going to go 100 feet. You no, have I to do the rest. I, I I I did it twice. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So Josephine works and has no problem doing it, especially because she's a ranger and she's pretty wiry as a little elf, and she's able to climb up there. She could have done it without the rope, probably no problem. It would have been an athletics check, but uh, she wouldn't have a problem doing it. So yes, you now have rope hanging down that you all can climb up if you make your athletics check. From the bottom of the pinnacle to the top of the roll pinnacle. Roll the twenty. Yay! Twelve. Dice roll. Right, well, this is the first no time problem. we've rolled all night. Twelve. It's not a. It's not hard because you're holding on to a rope, but twelve makes it no problem. Ten. That's fine. Um, 
28. Fine. Right. Yeah. Uh, 12 for me. You're fine. Nobody rolled a one, so nobody fell. Yep. You Ian, all make up? Ian didn't chime in. He He's, yeah, he was the first one. Oh, okay. He made it 12. I was going to say, he Were you trying to jinx him again? <laughs> <laughs> so I could just look by people's faces if they've actually rolled like a real, real, real low. Okay, so you make it to the top, and once again, you are at that wonderful little spot that uh, we were at before where you see the flame still burning uh, uh, in the portal that will take you to the Hall of Fires. All right, and um, we did get some information about the different destinations from... Why don't we, why don't uh, we show them on screen some uh, new yeah. stuff here? Who's going to drive? Uh, okay. Trade, trade driving to somebody else. Uh, well, uh, this is where we are right now. Yep, yes. that's where we are. And uh, we are heading towards... Are you stepping into the portal again? Right. Isn't the the, the flame is a cold yes. flame, right? Cold flame. Like, yeah, we can all yes. just, like, link arms. Yeah, go in. Jump in. Yep. The reason it's a cold, cold flame is that it actually is somehow, that is literally burning, burning aether that you're stepping through. It's magically burning and it's not giving off any heat. But it's causing the connection between this spot and the hall of fires hmm. so uh you step through yep yeah are we gonna come back to the the grand hall and spoilers let's well, oh. i mean if well, anyone has been watching the previous episodes they would know. Some of them may not even know but you know about the hall of fires and sure There's enough the hall of fires you end up back at the hall of fires with its ooh, it's cool music. Let me turn that down. That's ooh. A little bit. Okay, I'm gonna write uh, that we are on the portal that we just stepped out. That we came from that um, lagoon. Okay, so, so ever always presence of mind. That's mm -hmm. what you want in a good wizard. Your wizard Raven immediately turns around. He uses the ink that he got. This is the ink that you got from the, um, the frog, frog people, people yeah. right? Yeah. It could be, sure. That writes on water, but I don't see why it wouldn't write on this environment. It would write on anything. Yeah. There we go. Uh, sure enough. And so what do you write uh, on the uh, edge of the portal? What was the name of the lagoon we just came from? L the Luna lagoon? Bay. Luna Lagoon or something? Lumina Bay. Lumina Cove. Lumina Cove. Okay. That's what I write. Lumina In, in non-Latin. <laughs> so we can all read it that's in right. english that's kind in of english. you all right. yeah old english is one of the languages spoken in this world but only by a select few and do you, do you even remember who they are who speaks it who speaks old english uh, the world? old english um didn't we we ran into them at the trading post wasn't it the was the vikings bone or something like that the ones that got uh, that fell through. Nope. No. You haven't re run into hardly anybody who actually can speak it, and they speak it in a strange dialect. But you've been told by others that uh, English is spoken is the is the language of wilderness. Oh, wilderness. Right. That's Only why they kept confusing us with the wilders. Yeah, yeah, the wilders. Because wilders are not native to this world. And we wilders. haven't been to wildermage <laughs> yet. You have not. Nope. Um, does do any of these portals actually say Wilder Mage? That would be convenient. Well, we should consider too where we want to go next. Like, what is our what w is Wilder Wilder Mage? If that's a possibility. Well, we spoke about going to the Fey, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. To, 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 so, to the Fey to, to uh, about... reacquaint myself with my kin, who, who I've never met before, to try and form an alliance. And I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, were we not warned that in the Fey area, that's where the fighting is happening? It's You're permeating through there. The it's, it's everywhere, the yeah. Do you guys remember the map that uh, Nereo showed you last week? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that, that the blood just kept climbing yes well, and so there was a the expanded area that's place. now under North the influence of the soul drain the death and, and yeah. so the question uh, is that in that area yeah, was, was that, that in the fey area so it was still outside i believe yeah i'm just not clear about so okay here here's a map i'm just going to pop it up on the screen behind me too uh 
here's the map that you were actually shown by Nereo, which was uh, uh, in some ways slightly more accurate as far as the influence of the uh, soldiering dead. So he showed you that the bottom border of the Feywild, that the soldiering dead were starting to move that direction. And as well, they have claimed half of the Florida Peninsula of the Legardo people. Okay. See, didn't we just come down there? Yep. Yes. We were right sort of on but the But we edge. were on the, the other side that wasn't You came overtaken down the river the... that divided one side from right. the other. Right, okay. And you actually encountered the Alligator Man Temple that had been one place that they had crossed over and attacked. And then they had also crossed over and they were pushing into the Grung territory. That's yep. where you encountered them people. at Grung Lung Dung. Mm -hmm. um, well, there are two areas that um, the one that um, Norea uh, indicated was was uh, for the Fey was is Celestia's Fail, vale, and he also indicated um, some place that is north of the Fey called Ver Verdantus. I'd rather go from the north than from the south. I don't know about you guys, but the south seems to be where the soldiering dead are, and the north seems to be where um, there is not so much scary stuff. Well, um, Celestia's Vale is just indicated as that's uh, near the Fey, and the Fey has a huge area there. Huge area. Huge mm -hmm. area. So I'm I'm guessing it's probably more central. In, in the middle of the Fey. Sorry, what was the other one? I, uh, Celestia Verdantus is north of the Fey. Yeah. We don't know how far north. Yeah. So just north as opposed to north. We they, all they we have is that. just is north of the Fey is what he had told what, us. Sorry, what was the other one? Uh, Celestia's Veil. Vale. No, Celestia's Veil vale is north of north of the Fey, right? No, no. Celestia's Veil vale is, is the Fey. Oh, well, it is in Feyland. Let's freaking yeah. go there. Come yeah, on. that's what I've been. As Nereo said, is north, north of the, of the Fey. Fey. Okay. Uh, but not as, But there's also a place called Frost Reach, which, which is basically around Newfoundland. Yeah, I think we. That's a little too far north. far north. Yeah. Oh, no, it that wasn't, even on it, the that map. That was that was Harrow Fjord was up there, wasn't it? Frost Reach. He didn't know where it was. Oh, he didn't know where it was. Okay. But he knew where Harrow Fjord was because it is on the shoreline. On the shoreline, yes. And yes, it was up near what you would think of in modern terms as Newfoundland. Right. Okay. Do you guys want so to try, is probably and, like, try to make friends with my kin that I don't know? But like, let's just take a chance. Well, I've just done that with my kin. Try not to get married. <laughs> sacrifice. Ew, married is gross. Yes, a sacrifice is even grosser. Well, I'm I'm content to uh, to go to Celestia's Vale. Celestia's Vale well, sounds good to me. Celestia's Vale. Celestia's Vale. Sure. Celestia. Let's do okay. It. Everyone, link arms. Wait. Why don't we just have a look and see what's there without committing too far? One moment, please. How do we do that? <laughs> okay. Abuelita, abuela. Should we go to Celestia's Vale? I still have to get all my riddles set up. Um, should you go to Celestia's Veil? Vale? What does Abuela Mala say about that? Abuela Mala speaks in a strange, cackling, whispering voice. And she says... <laughs> She doesn't know. Oh. Well, that was the least helpful answer she could have given. What she <laughs> foresees is dark smoke wherever you go. Okay, so let's do it then. Right. What's the worst that can happen? We've already been swallowed by all kinds of things and beaten and married. Yes. It gets worse. I know. That, that, that was like the best part of our trip so far. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
East. He got some. Like, it was good times. <laughs> you know, and I got to tell you, honestly, okay, so unlike, unlike a regular module that we did like we did last time when we did one of the Dungeons & Dragons modules, because this is all homebrew, this shit is all totally improv. There are little bits of some modules that I will sometimes find that might work and I can include them. But I had zero plans <laughs> for you guys to ever be anywhere near the merfolk. Zero <laughs> plans. I did not want to try and figure out a damn underwater adventure. I had no plans. And then you had to go and frickin' pick the one damn portal <laughs> that I had out in the water. The one, of course. People, it's better. Down when it's wet, take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, as the person who is really claustrophobic about spaces and just weights on top of me and whatnot, I am so very happy to be out of the water. Thank you very much. Oh, well, so I had to just make up all that shit just on the fly as far as finding a shipwreck and everything else. And then I had to come up with freaking <clears throat> merfolk and the, everything about them and on and so on and so on. Now, you are in the Hall of Fires, and you have decided that you're going to step through the portal called Celestia's, Celestia's Veil. Veil. You know that it's called Celestia's Veil because of the weird tiger memories that Percy has. He was able to read that language. Okay, I'm going to write Celestia's Veil with the uh, with the inks that Frog I have ink. in yep. English around okay. it. Uh, are you all stepping through, holding hands, planning on going through? Linking elbows. Yep. Holding hands is like a little too kindergarten. We're adults, so we link elbows. That sounds good. Yes. You all link elbows, and as you step through the portal, mm -hmm. you find yourself once again on another pinnacle. This time you are ringed by some fairly large mountains. Ooh. And as you look out through a gap... On the southern end, uh, I'll leave it zoomed out for you for a minute just so you can see what's going on here. You realize, and apparently you've got very quite, very loud, that's the wrong music. Sorry. Sounds great. That's nice it's music. very ethereal. As you look out, you realize that all of the forest on the southern half below the pinnacle is on fire oh thus the black smoke thus the heavy smoke and if you look at the top left corner of the uh map uh you'll see that there's a heavy pall of smoke yeah. that's been blowing that direction the only part of the forest that is not burned is the part to the north of you uh and uh, both the northwest and the northeast of you the forest has not been touched but the Fire is creeping around the pinnacle on both sides. Uh, it's pretty much burned out in the south. There are only a few little pockets left. It looks like most of the fire is passing by the pinnacle now uh, as it's consuming the trees to the north. And the trees to the south are black charred husks that are all burned out. So this is a safe area here. And everything else is either in flames or smoke. It's all burned out or it's still burning. Burning more on the east and west sides. The south is pretty much completely burned out. Well, that's kind of depressing. Yeah. We got anything that can extinguish the fire? Produce well, water? Uh, not, not at this level. Not at this scope. Fire? I mean, is one of your powers to produce water? How much water? Oh, yeah. Like 500 mil million liters? For yeah. some reason, uh, my um, thing is not opening. Well, mine just did this. I'm. Oh, my computer is currently restarting, so that's exciting. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you see it on the screen? Can I put it up on the screen for you? I hope so, because... I... Well, do you see it right here? No, that I see. I just can't <coughs> open up the linear rows. Oh. If I click on it, it won't open. No, you don't need to open it. 
protecting yourself right now. Got it. So yeah, we uh, haven't rested since Lumina yeah, Cove, I, right? I put it up. Uh, you should be able to see it on the adventure screen now. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it's we good. have not rested since Lumina Cove. Since he since had his banquet. slumber party. You, yeah. by the way, you do have all of your your spell slots. Everybody has okay. full spell slots and full health. Oh. Okay. Two is you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't use anything. But my uh, familiar is still three days away from. I'm going to say that uh, you spent an extra day there. Your familiar is one day away. Oh, nice. Because you've been away from your familiar long enough. I'm also going to say we're going to call a break. We'll let you guys think about what you're going okay, to do awesome, here. Awesome, because my computer doesn't. And uh, be we're going to take uh, ten minutes, and then we're coming back for the final session tonight. All right. All right. This it's so much uh, fun. I'm happy that this we're is finally exciting. on land. Now you guys yeah. can figure out what you're going to do and where you're going to go are, in the land that you are on. I agree with you. We should take we'll a We'll be right back.